welcome back. Evidently filing went okay and you're ready for the next step. So we are now on step six of the basic metal smithing process. You've cut out your design, you've filed your edges, so you have nice clean edges and smooth lines, and now you are ready for sanding. In sanding, we're going to use our friend, the sanding stick. It is not a fancy tool, but it sure is helpful. This sanding method really works well on flat sheet metal. Once we start forming things and having different layers with soldering, there's a few more sanding techniques that we'll cover at that point. But if you're just working with one straight sheet, this is a great method for you to follow. Safety wise, kind of like filing, sanding's a pretty safe thing. Um, goggles are a great idea. If dust is something that bothers you, you might want to wear um, a dust mask of some sort. Um, you want to wash your hands when you're done working because they're going to get pretty dirty and you don't want to ingest the debris from the sandpaper or the metal. Um, but other than that, you're in a pretty safe space. So goggles, just to be on the safe side. Mask if you would like um, and make sure you wash your hands when you're done. The first thing I'm going to teach you is how to make a sanding stick. And the second thing I'm going to teach you is the process for sanding. Before I can show you how to sand, I need to show you how to make the tool that we use to sand with. And in this case, in our class, for basic sanding, we use what we call a sanding stick. Now you can buy these directly or you can make them. It's a lot cheaper to make them. It just takes a little bit of time. We have these pieces of wood wrapped in sandpaper that we use to sand our metal with. And this is a sanding stick that's already been made. You can see the side has been used and it's used up. You can't make it work anymore. It's really not doing enough work cutting into the metal. On the back side, I have this piece of tape. I untape it. I reveal the clean or cleaner sandpaper. And then what I do on the new back side is I fold the paper. I just use my fingernail. You could use scissors for this. Use my fingernail, kind of straighten it off. And then I'm going to rip off the scrap, retape it. Sometimes I can reuse the same piece of tape, other times I'll have to get a new one. Retape it, and I've got sandpaper to use again, nice and fresh. At a certain point, though, your stick starts to look like this, where there's not any good sandpaper left. And what I want to show you um, how to do is to put a new piece of sandpaper on your sanding stick. So the first thing you would do is pull the sandpaper off and throw it away, okay? Then you need to get your new piece of sandpaper out. In our Meadows class, we're gonna use six, or three basic sandpapers. 600, which is the finest grit, a 400, which is a medium grit, and a 320. And I don't have a stick with a 320, and this is my solution. I have a stick that says 600, but I need one that says 320. So I'm just gonna take a piece of masking tape, cover that up, and relabel my stick. It is important that you know which sandpaper you're using, otherwise you're gonna really confuse yourself in the process and you'll end up having to rework your sanding process, and nobody wants that. For sandpaper, we use a basic waterproof sandpaper. This is G2 waterproof. This is my 320, here's my 400. Here's my 600. I will sometimes go up to 1500, and if you get to the point where we're buffing in class, and you do not like buffing for very long, if you go to 1500, if you add one more layer of sandpaper, it really uh, speeds up the buffing process. I'm gonna show you how to make my 320 stick. The same process happens for 400 and 600. So I'm gonna need my 320 paper, my stick with 320 on it, masking tape and then I use a file for part of this and I always use a file, any file that has a little bit of a point. What I'm gonna do is take one piece of tape, about the same length as the short end of my sandpaper. I'm gonna put it on the front side, flip my sandpaper over, then I'm gonna line up my stick really carefully to the top of my sandpaper and this edge of my sandpaper. So I want it to line up. Then I'm gonna pull my tape around, nice and tight. And then this is where my file comes in. I want to position this so it's pretty comfortable. 
I'm gonna grab a, one more piece of tape. I'm gonna tear it while I, I have a moment. I'm gonna put it to the side. I don't want it to stick to anything, but I want it handy. Okay, so I have my tape handy over here. And then what I'm gonna do is pull my sandpaper up and away from the stick. I'm gonna push hard down on the stick, and then I'm gonna score which just means scrape or scratch. I'm gonna score along this edge. If I push too hard, I might cut my paper, so I'm just gonna do it a little bit. I'm gonna pull, score, turn, and then I'm gonna score again. This is giving me nice corners. Pull, turn, score, pull, turn, score, and I will continue to do this process all the way to the end. Now I'm at the end. I've got this lined up here. I have my piece of tape, I'm holding it tight. Put that tape on my seam. And I've got a nice, fresh, new piece of sandpaper ready to go. You're now ready to sand. You have your sanding stick set up, your metal has been filed, you're ready for the next step. On each of these two pieces, you can see a piece that has not been fought or sanded, and you can see the piece that has been sanded really cleans it up and gives you a nice outcome. And from this point, you can move into your next steps with finishing, which would either be buffing, applying a patina, um, giving it texture and things like that. We're gonna use our sandpaper in the following order. First, we use 320, then we use 400, then we use 600. The purpose and the point of the 320 is to get rid of the dirt and the grime and any scratches that exist on the raw metal. So that cleans it up. The purpose of the 400 is to get rid of the marks from the 320. The purpose of the 600 is to get rid of the marks from the 400 and to prepare our metal for buffing. If you're somebody that doesn't like buffing, you could also use one more level of grit, which is a 1500 grit. Um, if you use the 1500, you'll really, like, buffing will go quickly. <laughs> um, so 320, 400, 600, each one removes the marks that were there previous to it. You need to remember that with sanding, pressure counts. So the harder you push, the faster you'll sand. Um, if it's taking you a long time, you probably need to push harder. All right, let's get to the technique. So we're going to sand using our bench hook. Um, if you look at my hands, you can see that they get kind of dirty. So be prepared. Wear a mask if dust bothers you. In fact, in general, it's a better idea to wear a mask than not. It's recommended. Um, uh, goggles as well because we don't want to get dust in our eye. I'm going to put my metal down on the bench hook. I'm going to grab my 320 stick because that's what I start with and I'm going to start sanding. So hold the metal tight so it's not shifting on you and you're just going to push hard back and forth in one direction. Why one direction you ask? Because it's a great band. I'm just kidding. I don't know if I know any music by one direction. We go in one direction because when I'm done with 320 I have to go to 400. And when I'm at 400, I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna sand in the opposite direction and it'll allow me to see when I'm done with 400. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. But you're gonna keep pushing, pushing, pushing really hard until you think you're all done. So I'm not quite done. I'll show you why I'm not done because I want you to know what to look for. So if I move this around in the light, what I'm hoping that you can see is right up here where next to the drill hole, there's an area that's catching the light a little bit differently. That area hasn't been sanded yet. It's still got some of the dirty original metal. And over here, and I don't know if I can get it, oh, yep, that shows up. Do you guys see there's a little line that goes against the direction of the sandpaper there, and there's a little line there that also does? Those are scratches, and I have to sand those scratches out. If I don't, when I get to buffing or adding texture or patina, you're gonna see these scratches and you can't buff a scratch out. You gotta sand it out. So I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna turn my sandpaper. I'm gonna use one of the, the little thinner edge here and I'm just gonna push really hard <laughs> where there's a little divot. That's the reason it didn't sand there. There was a little divot from when I drilled. And I'm gonna really push hard and get after this scratch until it's gone. Then I'm just gonna make sure that I've cleaned up all of my marks. They're all going in the same direction. I had to go a little bit against the grain there to get rid of that one. So I'm gonna clean up my directionality of my marks a little bit so it's ready for my 400. I double check that I don't have any scratches or any areas that need to be cleaned up. It looks good to me. So the next step is I need to sand 
these edges that I filed. So to do that, I just use my sand stick like I use my file. I hold this in my hand, curve around the edges. With jewelry, you also wanna make sure it's comfortable to wear. And if I have really pointy spots and those hit my whoever's wearing my jewelry, it makes it really uncomfortable, right? We don't wanna draw blood. So I'm gonna take my sandpaper and I'm just gonna gently round off that corner just a little bit. I still want it to read as a point, but I don't want it to feel like a point. So I'd finish this side, all my edges. Then I'm gonna sand the back side of this with 320. Once I've got the back side sanded with 320, I'm gonna put that away. I'm gonna grab my 400. And I'm gonna set this down. And now I'm gonna go in with my 400 and I want to go in the opposite direction. And when I do that, you can start to see how the directionality of the sandpaper works. You can start to see how here are my marks from 400 going against the marks from 300. And when all I see are marks going in this direction, I'll know that my 400 has gotten rid of all the scratches from 320. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with that 400. You can see I'm almost there. Up at the top, I still have some areas where I see my 320, so I wanna keep going. I'm good now, I'm ready to move on to my 600. So I put my 400 away, grab my 600 stick, and I'm gonna do the same thing again, I'm gonna go opposite. Um, please note that I am skipping, I skipped sanding the back with my 300 and my 400, I skipped sanding the edges with my 400. If you, when you are doing your work, you wanna do 300 or 320 on the whole thing, 400 on the whole thing, then 600. Don't do one side to completion, flip it, do the other side to completion. Do the, each step for the whole thing. Brush off your bench hook every once in a while so you don't have things on that surface that are gonna scratch up your metal. Something that you should know about the 600 sandpaper, it's really, really a fine grit, and it takes a long time compared to the 320 and the 400 to do the work that needs to be done with sanding. And it's also arguably the most important to do all the way to completion. After 600, if you're buffing, is when you're gonna buff. And if you don't sand out all of those marks from 400, when you get to the buff, you'll start to see those marks and you'll get frustrated and be spending all this time um, at the buff, which is hot work. Like you, it makes the, the, the friction heats the metal up. It's a place that my students usually don't like to spend longer at than necessary. And if you don't sand well enough with 600, you gotta spend time there. So really make sure that you sand all the way with that 600, um, that you're not missing anything. In fact, I typically tell my students, go all the way till you think you're done and then keep going. Um, go past what you think is good. Okay, there's no overdoing it. The only way you'd overdo it is if you sanded through your metal and I think you'd have to work really, really hard to get rid of that much metal with a 600 grit sandpaper. All right, we're getting pretty close there. I would again sand my edges, sand my back. At this point, I've reached 600, I'm ready for my next step. Big things to remember with the sandpaper is 320 first, then 400, then 600, okay? Make sure you follow that. Go in opposing directions with each sanding so you can see when you're done. Use that bench hook to press against so you can push hard and push hard. The harder you push, the quicker the sanding goes. Um, the other thing I want you to note is this is sanding for simple flat sheets of metal. When we solder, sanding becomes a little more complicated. And when we get to that point, I'll do another video with my, my tips and procedures for sanding soldered pieces. Take your time, have some fun, and be patient. Mm -hmm.